All right, what's up, everybody? We are back, still talking about rational expressions. This is kind of a part two video. Um, if you haven't seen my first video where I kind of go through these exponent rules and review them from Algebra 1, uh, and then I talk about these two, go back. I'll try to link that and put that up here. So just talking about these old ones, okay? So again, this is talking about like if you have two um, things that you're multiplying together that have the same base, okay? The base, again, is this number or variable or whatever you're raising to the power, okay? So this is the power or the exponent, the small number or term, and then the base is the bigger one that that is the number. All right, so this first rule says that if you have um, two things of the same base that you're multiplying together, but they have different exponents, or they could have the same exponent, but basically you just, you add, if you're multiplying them and there's two separate ones, but they have the same base, you would add their exponents together, okay? <laughs> So like an example of this would be 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 3rd equals 2 to the 7th. Okay, I could add 4 plus 3 to get 7, and that would be the same thing. Okay, kind of the opposite rule with division. If I Same idea. If I have the same base of something and I divide those two, I would subtract their exponents. So same idea if I had like x to the 4th over x to the 1st, I would do 4 minus 1 and that would be the same as x to the third. The third one is kind of power to a power, it's called. Um, so like if you have something something to a power, and then you kind of take that term and you raise it to another power, that's when you um, multiply the exponents together. Okay, so um, like if I had x um, squared to the seventh, I would I mean that would be x to the 14th. Because basically what this is saying is I would have seven groups of x squared. Or it would be x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared seven times. And then this fourth one, this one's the one that kids often forget about. But when you have a negative exponent, okay, if you just have something to a negative exponent, okay, oftentimes um, when we simplify things with exponents, leaving the negative exponents in there is, is not the correct uh, form. Okay, so if you... What you would do is you would think of that as a fraction, okay? So you could think of it as a fraction, a to the negative m over 1. Basically, to make that exponent positive, you would move that term to the opposite part of a fraction, okay? And it's a weird rule, but that moving it to the opposite part of a fraction makes it um, a positive fraction, okay? So an example, a big one. So if I had x to the fourth, y to the negative third over x to the... Uh, negative seventh y, if I had something like this, okay, and it just said simplify, I could take these, right, and I would move the ones with the negative exponents to the opposite part of the fraction first, okay. So I could take this y to the negative third and move it to the bottom. I could take this y to the negative seventh and move it to the top. And again, the other two terms don't have negative exponents, so I can leave those where they're at. So I could rewrite this as x to the fourth times x to the seventh over y to the positive third, and then that single y, y to the first. And then just finishing it out, it could simplify as x to the 11th. So x to the 11th over y to the fourth. And again, multiplying these, that's applying this first rule of adding those exponents together, okay? But again, it's just when I move those, it makes that exponent positive, okay? But yeah, now that we've gone over all that, um, let's talk about actually applying these exponent rules um, to some problems where we can simplify here. Now, I know these look really scary, but I promise you guys will be able to handle these. Okay, so looking at this, number one, 216 to the one-third power. Again, this is hard to conceptualize just looking at this right now, but again, we can always convert between this fraction exponent form and this radical form. So it's going to help us to change this to radical form. And again, this is, again, the, the denominator is my index. So really, this is saying the cube root of 216 to the first power. And again, I don't really need to write that. Okay. And then, yeah, you could just simplify it. The cube root of 216, or what times itself times itself equals 216. And that ends up being 6. Exactly. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. Okay, now with number 2, okay, again, we talked about this rule up here where if things have the same base, 
we are going to be able to add the exponents together. Okay, number two doesn't have that. Um, the bases are different, even though the exponents are the same. Okay, but because they're fractional exponents, what I can do is apply a different rule that we learned earlier with radicals and say, okay, this is the fourth root of five times the fourth root of 125. Just convert those to radical form. But then we talked about how you can multiply. If things have the same radical, you can kind of combine those within the same thing, right? If they have the same index, you can do this. And so the fourth root of 5 times 125, 5 times 125 is 625, okay? And then the fourth root of 625, or what times itself, times itself, times itself, equals 625. That ends up being 5. That is how we go about that. So you guys can see a lot of the time when we're given these fractional exponents, it's going to help, it's going to, help to uh, convert it to radical form, okay? Now that's true when I'm given like whole numbers, okay? because with whole numbers, I can actually take those and, and convert those, okay? But with variables, like you can see, three through six are gonna be all dealing with variables. Oftentimes, it's gonna be helpful to keep them in that fractional exponent form because I'm able to manipulate that a little bit easier than I can um, a, a radical, okay? So like looking at number three, x to the five-fourths divided by x to the three-eighths, okay? So again, I could convert these to radicals, okay? But again, what rule am I gonna apply? I'm gonna apply this number two, okay? That says, right, these have the same base, they're both x's, and so that means I can subtract their exponents, okay? So this would be saying x to the 5 fourths minus 3 eighths power, okay? But this is a little tricky, okay? And this is throwback to like middle school where we're gonna have to subtract these exponents, okay? And when we add or subtract fractions, we need them to have the same denominator. You might remember that. We want common denominators, okay? So I look at these denominators, right, 4 and 8, and I think, okay, could I multiply one of those to get them to match? And yeah, it would be this 5 fourths, right? I could take that 5 fourths. I have to multiply the top and the bottom by something to keep it as an equivalent fraction. But if I multiply the top and bottom by 2, I would get 10 eighths right? 5 times 2 is 10, 4 times 2 is 8. And so now they it would have the same denominator as the other one. So this would be really saying x to the 10 eighths minus 3 eighths. And 10 eighths minus 3 eighths, that's easy, right? I just multiply across the top and I leave the bottom the same. So this would be saying x to the 10 minus 3 is 7 eighths. So there's number 3. Number 4, 3 times the square root of x raised to the two-thirds power, okay? Now you can see four, five, and six all deal with kind of this raising a group of terms to a power, okay? And the step one for all of these is going to be to distribute this um, fractional exponent to each of the terms in here, each of the numbers or terms in there, okay? Because Sometimes we do do that, right? Because even though I'm saying distribute it to all the terms, it's more like all the parts of the term. These are all, even though they have different components to them, these are all single terms. You don't see any pluses or minuses in there to, to break up the terms. So that means that when it, when it is just one big term with these different components, that's when it's okay to distribute the exponent, okay? If there was pluses or minuses in there, then we'd have to do uh, something different. It'd be a little bit harder. But we can do that with all these, okay? So distributing this two-thirds exponent means this is going to be three to the two-thirds power and then times this x. Notice what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna change this to say x to the one-half and then times the two-thirds power, okay? Again, fractional exponent form is easier to kind of combine these. If I left it as a radical, it would be hard to know how to combine the, the square root of x and then that two thirds. So changing it to a fractional exponent helps there. Okay, and then I go about this, okay? Now this, this number here, okay, three to the two thirds power. Again, thinking about this, okay, again, what this is saying is take the cube root, right, that three is the denominator, so that's the index, take the cube root of three squared. Okay, I am changing that to a radical because again, the whole numbers with numbers, it's easier because we can actually make this into a, a number that we can grasp. 
But with variables, again, it's oftentimes easier to keep it in fractional exponent form. But, so I take this, so the cube root of three squared, and what's three squared? Three squared is nine, right? So the cube root of nine is what that part turns into. And again, I can't really simplify that anymore, okay? Because I would need a group of three threes to take the cube root of it all. Uh, but then this x to the one half raised to the two thirds power, again, I'm gonna apply rule number three here, power to a power, right? Because I just have a single term with kind of two separate exponents. And so when that happens, I multiply the two exponents together, okay? So this would be saying x to the one half times two thirds. And it's weird if you might if you might remember with fractions, it's easier to multiply them than it is to add or subtract them because we don't need a common denominator to multiply. Okay, what I can do is just multiply across the top. One times two is two. And then on the bottom, two times three is six. So x to the two sixths power, okay. But again, just like all fractions, I want to reduce that if I can, okay? And I can do that here, right? Two sixths, when the top and the bottom are even, you can definitely reduce. So the final simplification for this would be the cube root of nine times x to the one third power. Okay, so that's how I would fully simplify that number four. All right, two more here. And again, it's similar to that one, all right? So 16y to the negative eight raised to the three-fourths power, okay? So again, first step, I'm gonna distribute this three-fourths power. So that's gonna be 16 to the three-fourths, and then y to the negative eight to the three-fourths power, okay? And what's what I'm gonna do? When it's a whole number exponent like this, I'm gonna make it a fraction, okay, eight over one. That just helps to get that fraction right when you multiply them, okay? So again, the 16 to the 3 fourths power, this is a whole number, so let's do what I did here. Let's make that into a radical so that it can understand it a little better. So the fourth root of 16 cubed, okay? So you'll definitely need a calculator for that one, but we'll leave it for a little bit. Let's simplify this, okay? So this is saying y to the negative eight times three would be negative 24, and then one times four would just be four. Okay, so that part at least is, is pretty simple, right? Why negative 24 divided by four, right? That's an actual fraction, so I can change that to just a negative six. Okay, now we're gonna move that again, right? You remember rule number four here says, right? I, I can change that negative exponent to be a positive. Okay, but we'll do that. Let's deal with this first. I actually need to get my calculator for that, so hold on. So now let's talk through this, okay? We can actually do this without a calculator, okay? So, Again, what, what we want to look for, and it might be a little harder because we don't know our perfect fourths off the top of our head, but um, 16 is an actual a perfect fourth. If we did the fourth root of 16, we would just get two. Okay, so we can kind of separate it, right? We can kind of say, kind of like this, this step here says, right? So if I did the fourth root of 16, right? Again, so that's saying that two times two times two times two is 16, okay? So that ends up being a two, and then I do two to the third power, and two to the third power ends up being eight, okay? So this fourth root of 16 cubed ends up being eight. So it's nice that it works out um, that well for us, okay? But again, this last step, again, usually it's not proper to keep negative uh, exponents in the answer, so I want to move that to the bottom of a fraction, okay? Now I don't move the eight though. The eight doesn't have a negative exponent. So I leave the eight where it is, and that would be technically on the top, right? Because if I thought of this as a fraction, it would be all that over one. But then I bump this y to the negative sixth on the bottom of the fraction and make it y to the positive sixth, okay? So the final answer there would be eight over y to the positive six, okay? So that's number five. All right, number six here. Again, same idea. We are going to distribute this one half to all three of those. Okay, so there's a nine, there's an x, and there's a fourth root of y. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna write that. So nine to the one half, x to the one half, 
And then again, the fourth root of y, writing that as a fraction exponent, that'd be y to the one fourth time, uh, to the one half power, kind of double raising it. And again, we're going to multiply those. Okay. Now just again, going right in order. So nine to the one half, right? Again, that's the same as square root of nine. And we can simplify that, right? The square root of nine is three. Awesome. So that works out really nicely. X to the one half. Uh, again, x to the one half, you could, we can't really simplify that at all, right? Because it's fully reduced and it didn't have an exponent before. So it's just kind of added on to it. So I could write it as the square root of x or keep it as x to the one half. Okay. Either way, I'll just keep it as x to the one half. Okay. So again, you could write it as a radical square root of x or you could do x to the one half. Okay. And then this y, right? Again, power to a power. So I'm going to multiply one fourth times one half. And that ends up giving me, right, 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 2 is 8, so y to the 1 eighth power. And then there's really nothing left to simplify there, right, because the fractions are all reduced. There's no negative exponents, okay, so 3 times x to the 1 half, y to the 1 eighth, there you go, okay. So there's just a few simplifying problems. You can see it's, it's getting into the nitty-gritty of math, and you guys who don't like fractions might be looking at this like, ah, no but it's okay. With some practice, you'll be fine with it. Okay. So thanks for following. Good job.